Seasons greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to do the last Christmas dinner before Christmas itself. <gasps> I'm going to make a roast duck with chestnut stuffing. And this was requested by JT Music Box, and when he did so I said I probably haven't got the budget for that, so he sent me money. Yes, thank you Jonathan, much appreciated. <laughs> It's been a weird Christmas season because everybody is so broke and, uh, you know, for various reasons. Turkey is off the menu um, and, you know, well, for many people it's never actually on the menu so it doesn't matter. And, you know, in the past we have had uh, roast goose and we've had duck for Christmas and they're perfectly fine. If you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, etc. And let's get on with it. yet another Christmas dinner, roast duck with chestnut stuffing. Right, ingredients for your stuffing, it's chestnuts. So you want 200 grams of chestnuts and 250 grams of sausage meat. I'm making my own sausage meat. So I've got 150 grams of minced pork and I've got 100 grams of breadcrumbs and an onion and seasoning, sage, salt, pepper. Also completely optional, but I'm gonna make mine into stuffing balls. And really what I want to make is pigs in blankets, but I haven't got any pigs. So I'm going to do stuffing balls wrapped in bacon. How cool is that? Oh yeah. If you can find ready peeled prepared chestnuts, I strongly recommend that you get them. I couldn't, so I've got fresh ones, so they need to be peeled. And what you need to do is cut across in the flat side of each chestnut and then boil a pan of water, stick them in that for 15 minutes. Don't do them all at once because it's easier to peel them while they're still hot and you don't want to do them all and then have them cool down and be difficult to peel because it's hard enough already. To prep the onion, top and tail it, cut it in half, peel it, slice it and dice it. And when it's all chopped up, melt some butter in a little frying pan and just gently saute them for about five minutes so they're softened but not coloured. Now I just need to mix up my sausage meat. If you bought ready-made sausage meat, obviously you don't need to do this. You could also buy sausages, actual proper sausages, and open them up and take all the goodies out. But I like making my own. So, plenty of salt. Never ask a cook how much plenty <laughs> means in, in the context of salt. And plenty of pepper and some sage. Other herbs are available. A mixy mixy, I'm not gonna get my hands in there just yet, not until we put the onion and the chestnuts in. Oh, a bit of water, that's what it needs. Because we need to kind of rehydrate the breadcrumbs a bit. A Couple of tablespoons, should do it. And the onions on the stove are cooked, so I just need them to cool down a bit. Because we don't want the heat from the onions to start cooking the meat. Not good. First batch of chestnuts had their 15 minutes, so I'll take them out. And I don't know if you can see that there's the, the there's the skin and there's the nut, which is the creamy coloured bit, and then between that there's some kind of this kind of I don't know felt insulation or something. You need to get rid of that. And this is definitely one of those jobs that you should have done yesterday. I love Christmas, especially all, all the stories, all the articles about uh, how, to, how to do all the Christmas cooking and that malarkey. Uh, and it's, you know, it's exactly what I tell you every year, which is, well, do as little as possible and do it as far as in advance as you can. Uh, that is the, the great wisdom of me. All right, there's my peeled chestnuts chopped into bits. And you might be thinking, that doesn't look very much. And you're right, because it's only about half of it. A lot of those, they, they were they were not very well. They were all bleh, black and yucky in the middle. Uh, and don't want to take any chances with that. So I'll finish off the stuffing now. Just mix in the chestnuts and the onions, which are nice and cool by now. I'll set that aside till later, because now we need to get on with this duck. Okay, so I've got a frozen up and it's been defrosting in the fridge for well at least 24 hours and the reason you do it in the fridge is because the temperature is controlled in there 
whereas in your kitchen it'll it'll be really cold at night it could be somewhat warmer during the day which could cause bacteria to proliferate in your duck you don't want that carefully unwrap it oh yeah I need to tell you some info it weighs 2.4 kilos it says it's enough to serve four and cooks in 110 minutes which yeah uh, I think it's possibly a bit too long but we'll we'll see so we want the we want to get the skin really as dry as we can I'll just chuck this in the sink got a bag of giblets in there which um, will go into stock so we've got flaps of fatty skin which need to be removed that will also go in stock and the other end just pat that as dry as you can right, I've just weighed that it's uh, it's just a, a little bit over two kilos now and it'll be a little bit less again because I'm going to take these wing tips off because they're there's no meat on them whatsoever but they'll they'll be good in stock because they've got bones in so for my stock I've got the innards of the duck in my pressure cooker with coarsely chopped onion, celery and carrot and some salt and pepper, some parsley and some winter savoury herb. So I've done loads of videos on how you make stock, basically bring it to the boil, give it 20 or 30 minutes under pressure, strain all the vegetables off through a colander, reduce the liquid, strain it off again through a muslin cloth and that's your stock basically. Taste it, obviously. Now when you've got duck you have to have orange. I'm going to stick this one in the body cavity but first I want to get the zest off it. You need your oven heating to 180 degrees Celsius for a fan oven, a convection oven. That's 200 for a regular one and that is gas, probably six. And the cooking time is 20 minutes per 450 grams which is one pound. Um, so with the reduced weight after I took all the bits out, it's uh, well, it works out to be an hour and a half, 90 minutes of cooking, plus 20 minutes at the end after that for resting. So I'll cut this orange in half once I've got all the zest off it and stick it in the cavity. So I'll just take those wing tips off and into the stock they go. <laughs> I wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> then we need to prick the skin all over. So when I say prick it all over, I mean it. It's top and bottom and sides and in the armpits and everywhere. And some people like to also cut a crisscross or score a crisscross on the breast of the duck, which looks nice, can look nice, but I'm not going to for this. And the reason why we do this to the skin is so that the, the, the layer of fat underneath can render, can melt and escape through the holes in the skin because, you know, there is a lot of uh, fat on a duck. They're famous for it. <laughs> and uh, it's very nice on your roast tatties. Okay. A lot of people like to shove um, stuffing inside the bird. I personally really don't like doing that, so I don't. Actually, what I want to do is uh, put the duck on a wire rack over the roasting tray and I'm going to do my roast potatoes underneath so all that duck fat will drip onto the spuds and be wonderful. But I need to pre-cook them now, I've not even started that so we'll just hold off putting that up in the oven for a bit so I get the spuds done. I told you it was all about planning. Spuds peeled, chopped into strange shapes but equally sized pieces in theory. Pan, water, salt, oil and uh, <laughs> hey that was my Gordon Ramsay does a cooking video impression cook chop chop really fast okay um uh, bring that to boil simmer it for 10-15 minutes now I'm gonna make my not pigs in blankets so I'll just roll up some stuff in more of a sausage shape than a bowl and wrap the bacon around it this is uh, smoked that bacon and I just know it's going to be fantastic. Okay, so let's put him on the wire rack. I'll put the wire rack on the roasting tin and stick it in the oven.
and the potatoes are cooked, drain them and give them a good shake in the colander to roughen up the edges. Give these a good swizz round, get them all coated. Now this stock has, uh, well, it's, it's had quite a while, <laughs> so I'm certain these things are well cooked. So we'll just drain them into our big pan. And then put that on the stove on high heat and let it bubble away until it's reduced by half. All right, the stock has reduced a lot, and so I'm, I'm now going to filter it through muslin cloth because you know there's there's still bits of uh, pepper and assorted herbs and stuff in there. Just a little taste. Whoa, very fatty, but very tasty. Did you say very fatty? I did say very fatty. Taste. Spoon. Excuse me. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the duck, but you were testing the duck. Oh, there's some serious flavour in there. I don't know. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Mm. We like that. Now we're about 40 minutes from the time when the duck has to come out. So I'll get that out and baste it and stir up the roast tatties. Wow! <laughs> Goodness me. I'll just pour that fat off. I told you you got a lot. And actually I've got room to put the piggy stuffing things in. Uh, so that's good. I'm not going to roast any more vegetables. I'm, I'm just going to steam some, some carrots and green beans. I showed you in the budget Christmas dinner how to do your sprouts and parsnips, so uh, don't need to do that again. Now we're 20 minutes from the end of cooking time and I've got suspicion that it might be cooked already so I'm going to check it. The internal temperature should be 74 degrees Celsius. You might see chefy people suggesting things as, as low as 54. And, and that's fine for the breast, which can be served pink. The legs, not so much. So when you're doing a whole duck, you're going to get it well done, whether you like it or not. Here we go, world's best thermometer, link below if you want one. Here we go, 84. 95. Etc. That is definitely done. So I'm just going to warm up a platter in the microwave to rest it on tempted in foil for 20 minutes. Okay, final job, make the orange sauce. So I've got another orange, which I've taken most of the zest off. Um, and I want the juice out of that. In a small saucepan, melt the butter, add the star anise and stir that around for a bit. And then stir in the flour to make a kind of thick paste. Basically, we're making a roux. Then stir in the duck stock that we made earlier, or chicken stock if you don't have any. A tablespoon or two of vinegar, red wine vinegar, or I'm using balsamic. And the re the reason for using vinegar is is to you know to add some sharpness to counteract the sweetness of the orange. But then we'll add a tablespoon or two of marmalade, and then the orange zest and the orange juice, and just stir those. Bring them to the boil. Let them simmer for a bit. And when they taste lovely and gorgeous and you've got a nice thick luscious looking sauce yeah done right let's uh pack this thing to pieces oh yeah so in case you're worried about the stuff going cold when when it's resting look there's still steam coming off that and it's actually been there well over half an hour so you know fret not i'm taking that out because it doesn't look nice I've got a fresh one. So let's get them over here. And it's 
So obviously this is not uh, a master class in how you carve a duck. <laughs> in fact, I don't think I've ever had so much trouble doing one. Goodness me. I think you've got trouble. I've just been mugged by a Christmas tree. Oh my God. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh no. Worn that special. Now it's falling off. <laughs> so don't let them in don't let them interrupt you, Keith. Right. I was I was just bringing peace and goodwill across. See, go <laughs> look, sit in there. Just that's it. You see, your um, little Buddha. And then I said, El Alfred could come too. Oh, Alfred. Who's Alfred? Alfred. Alfred. Yeah. And then, well, he insisted, and then I couldn't leave these out just because they were little. <laughs> <sighs> right. I've got to get more back on the tree at some point. <laughs> I mean, yeah. What are you doing? I think Alfred's been at the um, the fizzy drinks. Yes, yes. We do that bird, Keith. Hacking it to bits, bloody hell. Anyway, I think we've got enough bits there for for uh, photo and then yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Please just tell me. Yeah, that. That's, that's unhygienic, you know. Mm -hmm. Alfred, tell him all. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go away for a bit. <laughs> and now it's taste time with a Christmas tree. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to run in one horse open sleigh. Hey! Dinner. Yeah. Dinner. Dinner. <sighs> dinner, 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 dinner. That was easy. Dinner. Okay. I'm afraid if I move my head, they'll all jump off my shoulders. <laughs> but we'll risk it. This looks absolutely fabulous. <sighs> you know, the usual. Yeah, boring. <laughs> so this is chestnut stuffing wrapped in blanket. Mmm. Mmm. You know I love duckle orange at the best of times. Duckle. Duckle orange. Mm-hmm. So, mmm, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I remember. You were mm. making breadcrumbs this morning, weren't you? Oh yeah. So, but first I had to make the bread, you know. So I've been up since <laughs> three o'clock this morning. Mmm. <laughs> oh, good enough. It is. Yeah, he was. Uh, Oh, and then you were poking chestnuts, weren't you? And I was asking why. <coughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. Mm. Have I been taking my pills? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um. this is really nice. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, and thank you, Mr. Duckman, whose idea this was. I mean, I love duck at the best of times. You want some, Alfred? No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. He says he's vegetarian. Good. Should have come last week. Yes. Mm -hmm. So are we just going to do that thing where we stand here no. eating and going ooh like we always do? No, we're going to do the other thing where we try to get synchronised <laughs> with the wave. Mm. And we say, oh, it's the last one before Christmas, so I hope, <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful time. Me too. You will. And see you next year. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. That was almost synchronised. I know, I didn't even you. practice. Oh, it's my new approach to singing. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred, peace and goodwill. And my little angel, they all say. At Christmas, the penguins would as well, but they're shy. Who Are you knew? quite finished? Yeah. But, you know, I never expected to have introverted penguins. You think, you know, they've gone all out with the hats, but they keep turning their backs on everybody. I'm going to turn the camera off. Are you really? Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Tra. Duck balls with bows of holly. Go on. I have. Good. Fa la 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 la. Oh!